James O'Keefe joins us now, Project Veritas. We got him now. James, uh, first off, thanks for joining me. Always good to talk with you. Um, this is a very, a, a very insightful video in that we're seeing uh, and hearing a Jack Dorsey that sounds very different from the Jack Dorsey that talks to Congress about how Twitter strives to be so nice and fair to everyone. What does he mean here when, you know, the next few weeks and beyond the inauguration, what is what is Jack Dorsey talking about? Can you hear me? Yes, Dana? we can. Yes. Uh, yeah. So Jack Dorsey is talking about how it's much bigger than just one account. He's speaking about Donald Trump and he's says it pretty explicitly here. Mm -hmm. This is obtained by a whistleblower or an employee currently on those uh, conference or video conference calls with the CEO. He says it's it's we're going to be going beyond the inauguration every day, every week, every month moving forward. It's like we're shrinking the Overton window. That means the range of um, acceptable ideas and discourse to include voices that are not explicitly right wing. So every one of you, myself included, have probably saw your Twitter followers shrink by what, 10 percent, 15 percent over the last week or two. Oh, I've lost several I went hundred from, thousand. Yeah. I went from one point one million or one point two million to nine hundred thousand. So they're 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 retroactively um, getting rid of accounts that are linked to what they would view as discourse that is not acceptable. We don't know what, how that's defined. What Dorsey is saying here is that they're going to go far beyond where they draw that goalpost currently. So they're going to include moderate right voices and 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 we're getting some insights that uh, in, into how they're operating. And again, this was obtained on a video conference between the CEO and some of the top executives. And what I'm seeing, Dana, is a crisis of conscience uh, amongst tech engineers they're kind of all coming to Veritas right now. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is get these people to go on the record to be to be filmed. But I, I, this is not the first tape we've received and and we'll be having more installments in the coming days ahead. Yeah. And, and we're speaking with James O'Keefe of Project Veritas, whose new video uh, you, you see Jack Dorsey talking to employees at Twitter, a very different sounding Dorsey than what you hear in front of Congress. It's almost like he's two different people, James. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and and we got a statement, shockingly, from the vice president of Twitter yesterday who said, no, this is what Dorsey has been saying all along. But this is not what Dorsey has been saying all along. Dorsey is much more explicit with his staff than he is in front of Congress. And uh, I think they're in a bit of a pickle. And I'm shocked that they haven't banned me yet. I guess, actually, it's not shocking because they don't want to raise more awareness to what we're doing. It would be very ironic if they were to ban me for releasing a story about their censorship. In fact, Dana, last night, this thing was trending on Twitter, that, hashtag yep. Veritas Exposed. And I made a little video of our old friend, Andrew Breitbart, with hashtag war, because how amazing is it that not only were we not banned on Twitter for breaking the whistleblower story of Jack Dorsey, but it was trending on its on his own platform at number three or four. So I think this is, a lot of people listening probably feel rather hopeless, cynical, nothing matters, it's hard to make a difference. But I really believe that exposing these tech giants in this way is probably the only thing that they fear. It's mm -hmm. the only thing to hold their feet to the fire that we can do is to expose what they really intend to do here. You, men you, you mentioned something that I, I want to go back to. It's very interesting to me because I've you meant and you also just said the, the hopelessness that a lot of people feel because people feel as though they have no way to expect or even obtain any kind of accountability and and they i get it that twitter is a is a private company i think that they can't claim exemptions from liability of unprotected speech under 230 but that's kind of a, a, a another discussion but you mentioned the whistleblowers that are coming from these companies and that are that are coming to you because they're dissatisfied with the way things are operating uh in silicon valley and with twitter and with facebook so is that maybe the, the best route that we have right now is, and then to that point, are there enough people in these companies that would ever prevail upon these CEOs like Jack Dorsey to maybe kind of check their conscience, check their ethics a bit and, and, and do an inventory as to the fairness of their practices? These are great questions. I think whistleblowing, as I've said to you before, you're, it's not so much that the whistleblower is betraying their organization is that they feel the organization has betrayed the principles that got the employees started in the first mm -hmm. place. I do believe this is the only 
remaining solution to us right now because the political system is so broken. And I hear from libertarians that these are private companies and you are correct. They are private companies. They have a right to do anything, but they have a monopoly on discourse and they're the new town square. And um, in fact, this is how our own government distributes their messages. This is how our representatives, our elected representatives, Dana, distribute their messaging. Um, a lot of people are going to Telegram right now. I, I, we use Telegram. We use Signal. Um, w one of the things I'm finding is that if they ban me from Twitter, what I intend to do is distribute these clips on, like, say, a Telegram and then have our hundreds of thousands of users embed the clips back into t to Twitter. So it's kind of guerrilla asymmetrical mm -hmm. distribution. But I think the only remaining solution right now, as far as I'm as far as I can see, is to have these insiders go on the record because they have skin in the game. I think it's a very powerful thing for patriots who work for Twitter or Google or any of these things to go on the record, sit down 60 minute style and say, I am willing to give up my livelihood for the public's right to know what what is happening. And by the way, this guy, Jack Dorsey, I mean, what a you got it. I mean, I, I could just say he's just an odd duck. I mean, I, I think he's <laughs> meditating in some log cabin right now. It's just bizarre. I thought he was in, whole thing in a is, yurt somewhere in French Polynesia. A yurt. I mean, <laughs> it's even more bizarre. <laughs> I mean, I, I, he's not running the company in San Francisco. He's meditating in a yurt. Um, and he's sort of saying, we need to go to the extreme. So I think the mm -hmm. pendulum can swing back here if we expose these people. And, and I've had more than a dozen tech people in the last couple of days reach out to me. So I think there's hope to be found somewhere here. Yeah, we're, sp we're talking with James O'Keefe of Project Veritas. Uh, J with, with Jack Dorsey trying to control everything that's happening on Twitter, you mentioned too the, the monopolistic uh, influence, the power that they have. Uh, and just really quickly, you know, we saw this week Parler be, I mean, they were run off of the Internet. And interestingly enough, it was Twitter working with Amazon, Amazon Web Services. They had just signed a contract with Amazon in December for Amazon AWS to also provide the same services and in, in distribution for their tweets, et cetera, that they were kind of doing for Parler. And I'm just wondering if that is also part of his plan to kind of leverage, you know, these service agreements with other entities to not just run users off of Twitter, but any competitor to Twitter or anything that would challenge their influence off of the Internet entirely. Yeah, that's that's scary stuff. Um, I, I, my, my perspective is different than probably a lot of the other people that you speak with. I, I'm a content maker. We, we're a journalist and many people are journalists, but we do a very specific thing. We focus entirely on content creation. And I think a lot of people want to create a platform. Mm. Parler was a platform. Now parlor has gone. So the CEO announced that their, that their platform is, is probably not coming back. So rather than create a platform, my philosophy is a little bit different. I'm an unconventional approach to this, but I think we need just to create more content. I think that that the right type of content, whether it's a federal judge taking a bribe or the CEO of Twitter talking about his censorship tactics or um, you know, politicians behaving badly, the right type of content will distribute itself in whatever platform that exists. That maybe that's naive, maybe I'm idealistic, but I just think the truth is so powerful that as citizen patriots need to focus on um, citizen reporting, you know, kind of what our old mentor used to, you know, mm -hmm. Andrew Breitbart used to say, we have to be the media yeah. rather than be a platform. I think we have to create content that is so powerful that it, that it's, it resonates to, uh, people that don't think exactly like us. So that's what we're trying to do at Project Veritas. You can see on, on the screen there, Veritas tips at Proton Mail, which is an encrypted, uh, Switzerland based email service. And a lot of these tech people come through us at that email. Excellent. That's that's fantastic. Uh, James O'Keefe with Project Veritas. Last quick question for you, James. Are, do you have I would imagine you do have more to come as it relates to not just to Twitter, but these other companies, because you mentioned these people are reaching out to you. Yes, we've even yesterday we got that tape at I think it was 11 a.m. or 12 Eastern time and we published it at 6 p.m. So this is very leveraged. These insiders, whistleblowers, usually undercover work takes months. And yesterday it took six hours. So wow. um, we've had, when we published the tape yesterday, we had a few more people reach out to us. So it's kind of this momentum that we're building because people trust us. So again, if you're watching this, 
and you have a friend, a family member, you know what to do. Call Ghostbusters, <laughs> Veritas Tips at ProtonMail.com, <laughs> and we will we will get your story out. There you go. James O'Keefe doing the doing the real work. Uh, grateful for the work that you all do out there. And James, as always, thank you. We'll be watching.